the color and the contrast that we were able to achieve there was used in that set, that moment in the movie, and nowhere else in the movie. It kind of just tickled your subconscious. It's like, I've never seen anything like this before, and I don't know how I'm supposed to feel. My name is Dominic Glynn. I am a senior scientist at Pixar. Color science is the human visual system bound to a very scientific process. My introduction to color science was somewhat accidental, doing a lot of mountaineering, high altitude climbing. Uh, it was actually coming down from Everest. Um, I suffered a, a retinal hemorrhage. The scientist in me, the engineer, is totally fascinated by this whole thing, objectively like, wow, what is going on? This is weird and awesome all at the same time. Not at all painful, thankfully. When the inside of your eye is bleeding, that's sort of in the path of the light that we're usually seeing. There's some very odd stuff going on in terms of my visual field. That was sort of the, the first moment for me to sort of get a glimpse of how complex the visual system is. And that led to my, my current career in uh, color science for movies. My, my favorite color is actually a, a red that you can only see after you have shown the eye a very bright, saturated green or blue. There's a kind of red that you can only see for a brief moment. It's super, super saturated, basically. It's a red you've never seen before. We're, we're hacking the visual system, basically breaking both your brain and your eye just for a moment. Half of the, the color science is the, the physiology. The brain essentially has to reconstruct its best guess of what the eye saw. And so part of that can benefit from leveraging physiological familiar things that, that many of our audience may have previously experienced. The opening of Inside Out, at that story point, the baby is just born. So the first thing that the baby sees is the, the brightness of either the hospital room or their bedroom. What was really exciting with that movie was being able to sort of really crank just that moment in the film, the sort of fade to white that that caused your um, your sort of pupils to constrict. Give you that literal feeling, a physiological reaction of, oh, this is actually bright and, I, and my, you know, the muscles in my eyes are responding accordingly. There's a scene where um, joy and sadness, two emotion protagonists, are in Riley, the teen kid's uh, subconscious. The art direction was, I want this to look like a velvet painting under black light illumination. It's your subconscious, it's your deepest, darkest fears. And so the camera angles and the way that it's lit, but specifically the, the color and the contrast that we were able to achieve there was used in that set, that moment in the movie and nowhere else in the movie so that it was differentiated, but not in a distracting way. Ratatouille uh, is probably the favorite of my Pixar library. There's a, there's a scene where Remy, the little rat, is running around the kitchen after falling through the, the window, and he runs underneath the oven, which has these sort of open flames on the underside. We see the camera looking up at the flames and the little rat sort of recoiling from the, the heat of it. And that's one of those moments where, you know, we could sort of pump the brightness and pump the color and pump the sound at the same time, just sort of put you there with the rat like i'm small and that's big fire and i don't want to be here right now <laughs> even the food in that movie it's not photorealistic food but it's really appetizing you can tell it's not an actual pear and that's not actual chocolate on it but i still want to eat it there's a lot of pencil on paper drawing that happens early in, in the in the process there's not a lot of color uh, that goes on at that stage and then this sort of serial chain of assets gets handed between specialists you need to be able to sort of maintain a, a chain of understanding color science plays a whole lot into the planning and design of that handoff that is the best part of the job for me is both the artists and the art is out of this world it just blows my mind every day like I, i'm so privileged to be in the proximity of this work as it's happening. That's how I think about it every day.